All right, awesome. So welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you all doing today, right? I hope you all had a fantastic weekend and I hope you all are having a fantastic day, all right? So I got, like right here, how's everyone doing today? So you can go ahead and comment below. Let me know how you're doing. Also, you can comment, let me know what's going on in your class, whether you're in Organic Chemistry 1 or maybe you're taking Organic Chemistry 2 and you're just hopping on here for a refresh or maybe you just like watching Organic Chemistry, which is cool too. But go ahead and comment below and let me know what you all are up to, all right? So for those of you that don't know, my name is Dr. Jason Dinsmore, aka The Ochem Whisperer, and I want to help you completely and totally crush your Organic Chemistry class and discover your inner Ochem Rockstar. All right, so today specifically, what are we going to be doing? So what we're gonna cover in this lecture, right down here, of course, is how to determine RS nomenclature, okay? So basically, nomenclature is just naming things, and you should all be familiar with nomenclature. It's just basically a name, like your parents gave you a name, somebody and all these people came up with all these different ways of naming molecules, and when we talk about R and S, we're talking about stereochemistry specific. So this is gonna be how to name some of these stereocenters, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna understand chiral carbons. We've kind of briefly talked about that in a different lecture, but we're gonna go over that again. Down here, lean, learn, lean, learn how to prioritize the groups. We're going to find out we're going to prioritize our groups one through four. We're going to figure out how to do that. And also, we're going to take a look at the position of the fourth priority group, okay? In term, we're going to talk more about that, but in terms of where it's located, it's going to make a difference when we go through this whole thing, all right? So, as we've talked about before, chirality or chiral center, stereogenic center, stereo center, those are all basically interrelated. What you really need for a chiral center is you need a carbon, which is most important, with four different groups coming off of it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna erase the C because sometimes it's hard, kind of hard to see. You'll notice that this is not a chiral center, okay? This essentially has four of the same groups. So what I wanna demonstrate here is that when you have a chiral carbon or a chiral center, you're gonna have two lines that are in the plane of the paper. You're gonna notice the line going straight up and the one that's kind of going diagonal to the right, those are flat. It's like you're drawing it on a piece of paper. What you're also going to have for the other two lines, you're going to have a dash and a wedge. Remember the wedge is coming towards us. It's like coming out of our computer screen or our electronic device or mobile device. And the dash is going out the back of our device, okay? So we're going to have four lines, four different groups, and we're going to have dashes and wedges, okay? And so remember that a chiral center has to have four different groups. Now, more than likely, the way you're going to see this in your class is something like this. Your professor is going to have like some sort of alkene chain or a cyclical system, acyclical or cyclical like a ring, and you're gonna essentially see like a dash or a wedge on there. And that dash or wedge is gonna be a tip off that that's the chiral center, okay? Now one thing I wanna point out, I've pointed this out before, is your professor may give you a structure that has no dashes and wedges. And he or she may say, identify which carbons are chiral. Then what you're gonna have to do and go in there is find out if you have a carbon that has four different groups on it. If it has four different groups, it's chiral. If it does not have four different groups, it is obviously not chiral, okay? But in this case, with what we're doing today is that we are gonna see these dashes and wedges because we need to know the dashes and wedges in order to do our R and S nomenclature, okay? So what we also wanna remember is that each carbon has four bonds to it, and although we're not showing all the bonds, if we look at the dash, the dash BR, or sorry, the, the wedge BR, we also know excuse me, that there's a dash H. We don't draw the H typically, but I want you to know that essentially in this case, we're gonna draw the wedge BR and the dash H because we need both of those in order to assign our priorities, okay? So this is the structure that we're gonna look at and we're gonna try to assign this right here, okay? Now in terms of RS nomenclature, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign priorities to the atoms one through four. Because remember, we're gonna have a chiral center, a carbon, and there's gonna be four different groups off of it. So we're gonna assign those one through four and this, this, uh, this um, assigning is gonna be based off of molecular weight, okay? So we're gonna look at the chiral carbon. All the groups around the outside, we're gonna label those one to four, okay? The first thing I want you doing when you have to assign priorities, R and S and all this stuff, I want you to look for the non-carbon atoms, okay? Those are gonna be the easiest ones to see. And basically, what do I mean by non-carbon? It doesn't have the letter C. That's basically it. I was gonna say something else, but that's basically it. It does not have the letter C. So we can see in this case that we're not gonna be looking at our carbon chain because we know those are carbons. What we're gonna be looking for are things like halogens, like bromine, chlorine, fluorine, or, or oxygen, or nitrogen, or hydrogen. Those are the atoms that you're gonna be looking for in terms of your non-carbon, okay? Basically anything other than C. I know it's self-explanatory, but I wanna make sure that I say all this stuff, all right? So in our case, if we look at this, the two that I see are the BR and the H. Kind of looks like binoculars or glasses, right? So we can like zoom in on those. Those are the first two things that we wanna look at. Now in our case, we have two, maybe you're only gonna have one of them, but I want you focusing on the non-carbons first. Now what we wanna do is we wanna assign priorities based off of molecular weight. So the way this works is number one is the highest priority, and number four is the lowest priority, okay? So when I say highest priority, that means that atom, letter, element has the highest molecular weight. 
So in this case, and then four is obviously the lowest. So in this case, between these two that I've circled, which one do you think would be the lowest? Okay, go ahead and comment below. Now, for some of you, it may be kind of obvious. For some of you, it may not. But what I want you to do is I want you to comment here, okay? The reason I want you to comment here is because if you're confused or not sure or you're worried or you're afraid you're going to be embarrassed, I want you to feel embarrassed here. I want you to worry here. I want you to kind of wonder if you're getting it right here so you can figure it out here when essentially we're practicing. So then when you go to your exam, it's easy. You don't have to worry about it. You've worked out all the kinks. You're like, okay, I've already got this. I don't have to worry about it because I worked it out here in this live Facebook class with the Oakland Whisperer, Jason. All right. Does that make sense? Cool. Awesome. So go ahead and comment. Now on this one, the lowest priority, there's one element on the periodic table that's number one. You know what that is? It's hydrogen. And hydrogen has a molecular weight of one. So our fourth priority group, our lowest priority group is going to be hydrogen in this case. Usually in a lot of molecules, I can't say all the time, but a lot of molecules you're going to see hydrogen will be your fourth priority group because it has the lowest molecular weight. Not in all cases, but you should always be looking for hydrogen. So that's our four. Now in this case, if we were to look up the molecular weight of bromine, it's going to be around 79. So that clearly is going to be our highest molecular weight because the other two atoms, if you were to look coming off of there, we can see just our straight lines. Those are carbon atoms. Okay. So we've got our number one and our number four. Now we have to assign the two and the three priorities. Now, like I just said, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, Jay, hold on. Something doesn't seem right here. You said we're going to base this off of molecular weight, right? And when I look at this right here, they're both carbon. Carbon is 12 and they're both 12. How, how are we going to figure that out? Well, that's the whole point of this, right? I'm going to show you how to do this. So what I want to do is let's look at each carbon individually, okay? So I'm going to call this the left and the right carbon. So in this case, let's look at the left carbon, okay? If we look at that left carbon, and I guess I should explain this, you see that red little squiggly line? That means that that carbon right there is attached to our chiral carbon. So when we look at these carbons, we're not, we don't care about the chiral carbon. That's where all the groups are coming off of. We want to know the carbons and the groups coming off it. What do those things have? What are the molecular weights of those? And if they're the same, we want to look at the atoms attached to that. So what we're saying here is that this CH3 group is attached to our chiral carbon. So that carbon, the left carbon, what I'm calling quote unquote left, has three hydrogens on it. Okay. Now I want to go to the right carbon, and we're going to see the right carbon here essentially has two hydrogens attached to it, and you'll see I have another line right there that doesn't have anything on it. Once again, I've got my red squiggly, which means that that side is attached to our chiral carbon. What is that other line that I don't have? That is another carbon in the chain. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take some time and look at this and verify the fact that I have done this correctly, okay? That our left carbon is a CH3 group, so we have three hydrogens coming off of that carbon, and our right carbon is a carbon that has two hydrogens coming off of it. It's a CH2 group. And then that is attached to another carbon. I don't have all the groups coming off that next carbon because we'll find out we don't need to go that far. But here, I want you to verify the fact that I've done this correctly, okay? All right, awesome. So here's our left and our right carbon. Now, what we want to do is we can see our main carbon is carbon, right? So 12 and 12, there is no difference. So now what we have to do is we have to go to all the atoms that are attached to that carbon and see if there's a difference, okay? So the way to do this is you work through systematically and you essentially find what's the same and you remove it, okay? So let's look at the top two hydrogens. Obviously, hydrogen is hydrogen, so we can remove those. We don't have to worry about those. Those are the same. So what we're looking for, the key here is we're looking for a molecular weight difference. Just like when we did our bromine or hydrogen, we clearly saw Br and H are not the same atoms. They have different molecular weights, so we could assign different priorities. That's the same thing we're trying to do right down here. We're trying to find two atoms that are different so we can compare them. So the top two hydrogens, the same. What about the bottom two hydrogens? Obviously, they're the same, so we can wipe those out. Now we're going to see we finally got our difference, right? Look at this. On the left carbon, we have a hydrogen left over. On the right carbon, we have a carbon. So clearly, not the carbons that are attached to the red squigglies, but the atoms off there. Hydrogen has a molecular weight of 1. Carbon has a molecular weight of, I can't do, 12. So carbon has the higher molecular weight. So in that case, our right carbon is the higher priority because it's attached to an element or an atom or a letter that has a higher molecular weight. So in this case, our right carbon is going to be our second priority. Does that make sense? If we move through, we're moving through the whole molecule until we figure out where our molecular weight, where there is a difference. And in this case, our right carbon has a carbon attached to it, whereas our left one has a hydrogen when we eliminate everything. All right, so that's our second. By default, our third one's easy. We know that our left carbon is then going to be our third group, okay? So now we've assigned priorities one through four, one being the highest molecular weight, four being the lowest molecular weight. So number one is our highest priority, four is our lowest priority, okay? Make sense? Cool. Now, what we want to do here is I'm going to mark, there's our chiral carbon in the center, okay, that little green dot. That's the carbon that all these four different groups are coming off of that we want to kind of look at, all right? 
Now, what we want to do here when we do this RS nomenclature, we want to look at the one, two, and the three. We do not want to look at the four because what we're going to do is we want to think about this as connecting the dots, not connecting the dots in lines like we're used to when we were a little kid, but connecting the dots in a circular fashion. Okay, that's what I want you thinking about is connecting dots in kind of like a circular. So we don't care about the four. So what I want you to do is I want you to remove the four and what we want to be able to do is go one, two, three and see what direction we go into. So for example, if you do your one, two, three, and you wind up getting counterclockwise. So I'm gonna try to do this because the camera's always backwards. I think this should be your counterclockwise. It's my clockwise, but it should be your counterclockwise. When you move in this direction, the way that they've named that is S. You go one, two, three, and it's counterclockwise, it's S. If you go, let me see if I can do this again. If you go clockwise, I hope I'm doing this the correct way. I'm trying to do it opposite of what I see on my screen. If, for example, you go this way, which should be clockwise for you, the way they've designed it is R. Counterclockwise S, clockwise R. Okay, that's how we're gonna get the R and the S. So now what we want to do is we want to take our structure here and I want you to draw either your one, two, three in clockwise or counterclockwise. And what I also want you to do is comment below. So when you do your one, two, three, do you get a clockwise motion or do you get a counterclockwise motion? All right. All right. What do you all think? I'll take some time here, even though it's live, but even if it's you know not live on the replay, you can pause it, you know, if you need some extra time. So if I were to look at this, I'm gonna to try to do it your way as well. So you can watch my hand. I think you should see one, two, three like this, which should be clockwise. Okay. So we'll see that we go through there. It's going to be, oh, sorry, yours should be this way. I think I'm doing, it's, it's difficult because the camera's always backwards when it replays it. So point is, is that you should wind up getting clockwise. And we said clockwise is R, okay? One, two, three. Like I say, connect the dots in a circular fashion, not like a straight line, okay? So in this case, we've got a clockwise, which is R. So the designation for this chiral center is R, okay? That's all it is, just R, okay? Now, remember at the beginning, I said we have to pay attention to what our fourth part, where our fourth party is. In this case, it doesn't matter, we're okay, but on the next example, I'm gonna show you why this actually worked and we didn't need to do anything, because on the next example, I'm gonna do something different. We're gonna see that we actually have to pay attention to that fourth priority group, okay? So in this case, Zara, I'm hoping that that's what you all got as well. Okay, now check this out. I'm gonna take this molecule right here. Now watch the BR and the H, okay? Watch where the BR is and the H is, okay? Watch, boom. Do you see that? I'm gonna go back. So the BR initially on the first one we did was a wedge, the, the hydrogen was a dash, watch. I'm gonna flip them, okay? Now we've got our hydrogen on the wedge and we have our BR on the dash, okay? So we've just kind of flipped where those two positions are. Now what I want you to do is I want you to assign priorities to this, okay? And now some of you are saying, well, Jay, I've, hold on, I, it's, are, you want us to assign priorities to this? Because it seems like, isn't it gonna be the same? Like, aren't we gonna do the same thing? Aren't I essentially gonna say, okay, bromine has the highest molecular weight, hydrogen still has the lowest molecular weight, and then if I go to the two carbons, like you said, isn't, isn't the priority still going to be the same? Because we said that the right carbon has a carbon attached to it, the left carbon has a hydrogen. So when we compare those, the right carbon has a higher priority, so it's two and three. And then don't I just keep doing the same thing I did? Don't I just go through here again and go one, two, three, and I wind up getting my R? If you did that, okay, if that's what you did, from based off of what I just taught you, the logic is spot on. You did everything exactly the way that I just showed you, and you did it correct. However... That's not the right answer, okay? Because there's one piece of information that I haven't given you yet and I haven't shared with you. So if you did that and you said R, fantastic, you did it right, and but I wanna let you know it's not correct because there's this one thing that I have to show you and that has to do with where this fourth party group is, okay? So if we look at this right here, we're gonna notice in the first example that we did, you see how our fourth party group is back with a dash? Remember, dash is back away from us. And the fourth party group in the example that we just did is a wedge, meaning coming out at us. So with this, the thing is, is in order for this R and S to work, when we do our connect the dots, one, two, three, clockwise or counterclockwise, the fourth priority group has to be in the back. This is just the way the people that came up with this, this is the way they designed it. In order to get this to work, when you do our connect the dots, it has to be in the back. So between these two examples, the first one, the reason why we didn't have to do anything special is because it was already in the back. We did our one, two, three, we were good to go. We didn't have to do anything. However, in this bottom one, the new one that we're doing, you can see that it's in the front, so we're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to take that into consideration when we do this R and S, all right? So what we're gonna do here is I want you to take your molecule, and this is basically, let me put it this way. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna show you why it didn't work, how to fix it. This is what I call the long way. And then once we understand the why of why it's not working, then I'm gonna show you the quick method so you don't have to do all this on an exam or a quiz, okay? So first we're gonna see the why, then we're gonna see the quick way so you don't have to do all of it out. All right, so with this right here, what I wanna show you here is, let's look at it because I gotta think about the way you are. Okay, so imagine my hand is the molecule and this is the BR, okay? So it's the BR for you should be going away from you, okay? It's pointed towards me, but it's away from you. 
What I want you to do with this is since our fourth product group is in the front and we want it in the back, we need to flip the whole molecule and we're gonna flip it horizontal. But I wanna show you here, watch this. If this is our bromine here, I'm gonna take the whole molecule horizontal. I'm obviously not doing this very well, but I'm gonna flip it around because my wrist doesn't go that well. You see how now the bromine was away from you and now when I flip it horizontal, it's towards you. When we do that, what happens is when you flip a molecule, whether it's horizontal or vertical, all your dashes and wedges change. So in this case, what I wanna point out, what I did not do was rip off the hydrogen, the bromine, and then pluck it on the other side of the molecule. I flipped the whole thing horizontal. So what happens here is both the dashes and the wedges change. So when I flip it 180 degrees, now my hydrogen is back, my bromine is forward, and now I've got my fourth party group in the correct orientation. So what's happening here is we're just not looking at it from the right way. The one on the left, we're looking at it from this vantage point, but if, for example, if you could walk around the back of your computer screen and actually see it, you'd be looking at it from the right perspective. But unfortunately, we can't do that because it's flat on the screen. We have to actually rotate it and look at it, and now we can say, oh, okay. If you also want to confirm this with molecular models, those of you that are using that, go ahead and build the molecular model, flip it around, and, and verify the fact. But this is the way that I want you thinking about it, is that we need to flip the whole molecule. This is the long version, remember, okay? Long version we're doing first. You have to flip the whole thing, look at it. Then what you can do is now, Remember we said when we're doing our connect the dots with one, two, three, we don't care about the fourth party group. We just want the one, two, three. Now when we look at it, when we do our one, two, three, what do we get? Is that clockwise or is that counterclockwise? Okay, and you can go ahead and comment below whether this is the live or the replay. Okay, I want you all commenting. I want you all working on these problems, all right? When I look at this and draw that, I think that looks like, if I go in that direction, that to me looks like counterclockwise, so it's gonna be S, okay? So we can see that when we first did this, remember we thought it was an R, but it's actually an S. And the reason we got the wrong one is because we needed our fourth party group to be back and it wasn't in the example that I gave you, okay? So once we flip it, we can see the fact that now it is indeed an S, okay? So now if we look at these two molecules, we can see the top one that we did. When we just did our one, two, three, we got R. And the reason we are okay is because our fourth party group's in the back. The bottom one that we just did, where our fourth party group's in the front, we actually get an S. But if we did our one, two, three, we would get R. And the reason is, is because our fourth party group is in the wrong place. We want it on the other side of the molecule, okay? So that's why we have to flip the whole molecule. Now, here's the quick version. Because I don't want you seeing something on your exam and you're looking like, oh my gosh, my fourth party group is coming at me. Let me redraw the molecule. Let me flip it in my mind. Let me build my molecular model. Let me see if I got it right. Redraw it. You see where this is going, right? I want you to do this a quick version. So I wanted to show you here why we're doing this. But now that we understand why we have to flip it, let me show you what you should flip instead. Okay, you might have already figured this out and I hope you have, all right? This is what I want you to do. This is how you're going to approach every single RS nomenclature question that you have in your class. I want you to assign the priorities like we did, okay? Sign one through four. Then what I want you to do is I want you to forget about the four, we're at this stage right here. You forget about the four and I want you to do your one, two, three. So assign the priorities one through four, forget about the four and do your connect the dots with the one, two, three, okay? So if I did that on this example right here, I essentially see that in this case, this should give me clockwise and clockwise is, I'm listening, the letter R, yes, exactly. So we would say this is R, okay? So we've done everything saying assign priorities, do our one, two, three, get R, R, or an S. Now, if your, okay, I'm gonna write this up here actually. If your fourth priority group is in the back, okay, that's not what that says right there. I know that says in the front, but I wanna do this one first. If your fourth priority group is in the back, if it is a dash, leave it alone, you are fine. You do your one, two, three, you look to see if your fourth priority group's back. If it's back, done. However, if your fourth priority group is in the front, if you notice it's a wedge and not a dash, what I want you to do is instead of redrawing the molecule on your exam or quiz or homework and doing all this stuff, if you want to practice that, that's fine. But I want you streamlining this process on the exam so you can get through the exam and crush it, okay? Instead of flipping the molecule, do you know what you can flip instead? The R and the S. So all I want you to do is know that, okay, if I flip the whole molecule around, if I take a molecule and look at it from one perspective and flip it around the other, basically you're looking at either R or S. So in this case, if we do our one, two, three, we get R, the fourth party group's in the front, we need to flip it. Don't flip the molecule, flip it to the S. So in this case, this molecule is going to be S. So don't flip the molecule, flip the actual designation, all right? And that's it, that's all you have to do is assign your priorities, find your chiral carbon, assign your priorities, and then check your fourth priority group, and you're well on your way to crushing R and S nomenclature, all right? And with that, as always, thank you all so much for coming on here, whether you're a new follower, a long-term follower, I love, love, love getting to interact with all of you every single day. I hope you're commenting, I hope you're getting all the kinks out here so when you get to your exam, you're not gonna worry about it at all, right? And as always, until next time, I hope you all have a good one.